connect with your child. To connect means to deliberately, consciously, intentionally create the time. We have time for who we love. We have time for what we love. We have time for what we value. If you realize you're struggling to balance between work and parenting, I want you to know today you have time for what you value. In other words, perhaps you don't value your children. You live in deceit. I'm saying this because I've had men tell me in parental meetings, I've talked to so many of them, virtually in every continent. And sometimes I do lengthy, lengthy trips. I'll be speaking in the U.S. from April all the way to December in different states. And some fathers tell me I have paid the fees. I have bought the books. What else do they need from me? Excuse me? Who made you Amref and Red Cross? Why would you want to reduce yourself from a father to a sponsor? Why would you want to reduce yourself from the highest title? If you have paid the school fees, did you know that's the indivisible minimum? Everyone else has done the same. That's the entry level, the lowest entry level for you as a parent. How then do we graduate from sponsors to parents? By connecting them. How? Creating the time. For children, time equals love. Love equals time. I want to pull for you two illustrations of two successful people and then ask you, how much success do you want? I want to put an international example with a national example. Professor Wagari Madai is the only Nobel laureate from the nation of Kenya. That's a great success. And for the benefit of those of us who come from Kogelo, please, please bear with me, Barack Obama is not a Kenyan. Please just appreciate it. If he was, he wouldn't have been elected the president of the U.S. It's against the Constitution. Just agree and let's move on. <laughs> the only true Nobel laureate in this nation is Professor Wagari Madai. That's a great feat, a great achievement. No mean feat. But on her deathbed, and I'm saying this because it was in the public domain, she was quoted by the Daily Nation saying, the only thing I regret is that I never spent ample time uh, with my children. If the old professor is speaking to us today from her deathbed, if I may paraphrase her, she's saying this, I learned a little bit too late that parental responsibilities cannot be delegated. I learned a little bit too late that in matters parenting, you can't pick it up from where you left after putting up the apartments and earning the rentals, after putting up a nice business, after building your career, and then pick it up from where you left because the growth of children is irreversible. So this I regret. Yes, I'm an Nobel read, but there's something here I can't make up. I can't make up for the time I lost with my children. By the time he died, President Nelson Mandela was by far the leading icon in the world. Indeed, I've quoted him more than any other person in my books. It's my hope and prayer you are not going to quote, I'm going to tell you out of context. Sometimes I wonder, having saved a great nation from the forces of apartheid and by extension, humanity's freedom, having spent 27 years at Robin Island behind the bars, walking on rocks, is it possible? Deep down his heart, having lost three of his own children to HIV AIDS, he may have questioned his priorities. Is it possible? He may have thought to himself, if I needed to save a great nation, just maybe, just maybe, I did need to start a family. I don't know who in this live audience would want to be the next CEO of the multi-companies in Kenya, would want to be the next country director of an international NGO, would want to be the next vice chancellor of a reputed university, would want to be the next senior pastor of Sitam Kisumu, would want to be the next governor at the expense of your children getting HIV AIDS, at the expense of your children getting lost in alcoholism, at the expense of your children being brought down by a bullet because they were involved in crime, they were lured by terrorists, you see, for me, if my precious mercy walked out on me because of misconduct, for me, if my son Zeke, if my daughter Ivy someday told me, Dad, if only you were there for us like you went inspiring people around the world, if only you kissed away our tears, you understood our heartaches, maybe today I wouldn't be in prison. Maybe today I wouldn't have been wrecked by drugs. Maybe today I would need be nice to you. I would consider myself one more failure and a broken-hearted daddy, and never again would I start before people to speak what I'm so passionate about, parenting. Because to me, true success is when those closest to you love and respect you the most.